how many of you have ever lost your car keys or misplaced them at least? <laughs> Would you be interested in a solution w uh, which meant you'd never have to spend time looking for your keys again? It would be good, hey? Well, that's fantastic because for the last two years, I've been working on a top secret project to solve that problem. I haven't told anyone about it. I've spent quite a bit of time and money working on it, but today I'm going to unveil it, unveil it for the first time. Here it is, the key spotting parrot. <laughs> it's fantastic. You carry it around on your back and it's been trained to always look after your keys and see where you put them. And you never have to spend time again finding your keys. For $200, who's interested? <laughs> Not so keen. <laughs> so, morning. Uh, thanks for joining. And as you know, my name is Kim. In the last year, I have spent training parrots. No, uh, I've spent it in Scotland doing a master's in product design, which is, I think, a great course for any Zimbabwean because we're all pretty good at making a plan. But I'm going to be the first to admit that sometimes the first plan that I make is not always the greatest. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, oh, there's some nice pictures of Scotland. Uh, to quote Oscar Wilde, experience is simply the name we give to our mistakes. And what I've learned in product design and what I'm going to share with you this morning is how product designers sometimes make mistakes, but quickly get to, to the right product and some of the tools and processes they do to go through that. After that, I'm going to share with you how I've kind of a, applied some of those tools with Zimbo ties. And finally, I'm going to try and encourage you to learn a bit more about those tools yourself. So if you look around this room, Every product in the room solves a problem. So the fans solve our need to have some cool air. The windows are need to have light in the room. And all of these products, before they were made, started off as an idea in someone's head. An idea that they, were, that they came up with when they were inspired by someone's problems or needs. So it's a three-step a three process. Your, inspiration when you see a problem, your ideation where you come up with ideas to solve that problem, and implementation where you actually get around to putting, turning that idea into reality. Now, with my key spotting parrot, I jumped into the implementation step maybe a bit quickly, and I could have spent a lot of money uh, on training parrots that no one wanted to buy. And so you'll find product designers spend a lot more time on step one and two, and they'll often flick between these two before they even get to the implementation stage. And at each of these steps, there's a number of tools that they'll use to help them with basically structuring the creative process. So one of the tools they'd use uh, in, in the inspiration step is mapping the journey of a potential customer. So for the potential customer of our key, key losing problem, what the journey might look like is you get home with your keys and, I don't know, you unlock your house. After that, what would, you, what would, what would normally happen? You'd be carrying, carrying a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, yeah, you're in the kitchen. Uh, do you have an alarm system? Alarm, yeah, maybe you have to look after the alarms, or you've got a dog trying to get your attention, and so you dump everything down. Do you put your keys down in a specific place? Would you just leave the keys there? And so on. They would go through this whole journey. What's going through your head? Are you thinking about what you're cooking for dinner or what the children are up to? And once they've mapped out this journey, they'd go back and see at each stage of the journey what kind of pains or frustrations are going through you. The, the, the hungry dog trying to get your attention or the, the need to cook dinner or the need to switch off the alarm. And each of those pains then gives you a much better idea of what a potential customer is going through. And the solution you can come up with then doesn't need to 
necessarily solve all of those problems, but it might just target a few. And, and by doing that, by focusing on, on these different problems, you can actually come up with a solution that someone might want to buy. So a uh, product designer will then move on to the next step as your brainstorming and sketching is another tool they would use. And looking at all those problems they've identified, they would then quickly come up with some potential solutions. And they would often work with a team of, of not just product designers, but people who have experienced this problem themselves or marketing, marketing uh, or sales people. And you get a very diverse team that can give you a lot of different perspectives and ideas. And you can very quickly come up with ideas that are probably better than, than a parrot. Uh, and before, before you then go and implement those ideas, you would go back to your customer and say, hey, what do you think about this? Uh, just to make sure you're heading down the right, the right road instead of the parrot road. And, uh, and after that, another tool, they'll get into the implementation stage and another tool that a lot of designers use is prototyping. So you'd make very rough prototypes. You'd make maybe a key hanger out of cardboard and scraps of wood, or, or if you're designing an app, you might not even go and get someone to program the app. You might just have sheets of cardboard printed out with different stages of using the app. And with this prototype, you can also take it to a customer and very quickly get feedback on the product you're trying to design before you jump in and spend a lot of money on actually rolling something out. So th that's just three of the tools that designers use. There's a whole, a whole lot more. Uh, here's some great online resources. I think we can email these to you afterwards uh, if you'd like to learn about some more of these tools. So how, how have we gone about, or how have I been trying to use, implement some of this stuff in Zimbo Ties? Well, let me first tell you a bit about Zimbo Ties. So have any of you ever thought about how the fashion choices you make could have a positive impact on the lives of people and on our country, Zimbabwe? At Zimbo Ties, each eye-catching bow tie we sell is paying for one week of schooling for a child in Zimbabwe. From our initial sales, we've managed to pay for the school fees of two children at the start of this year. And basically, we're starting a bit of a, a scholarship fund, bow ties for school ties. Each of our bow ties is handmade in Mutari from off cuts of fabric, which means that each bow tie is actually one of a kind. And we're not having that much of an impact on, on the environment by reusing scraps that would otherwise be going going to waste. In the year ahead, we hope to sell our Zimbo ties in, in up to 30 countries around the world. So far, we've got them in 10 countries, and we hope to expand that. And we'd like to sponsor another, thank you. We, <laughs> we'd like to sponsor another 20 children at least. So how are we using design thinking this whole process? Well, obviously, you would imagine design for the bow ties, but you can actually look at design, using design in all the parts of your business. So a great tool that we use is called the business model canvas. So what it does is it basically breaks out, uh, breaks down your business into different segments. So you can look at all the important parts of your business, cost structure, value propositions, customer relationships, and instead of drawing up a 200-page a uh, business plan, on one sheet of paper, you can quickly come up with ideas. Because we're not really a business yet. We're more of a startup. We're more of a prototype. And we're testing for each of these things. We, we don't know if it's going to work yet. We're testing, are people uh, interested in, in buying our bow ties? Are they interested in the value proposition of when you buy a bow tie, you help a child in Zimbabwe? The way we, we're connecting with our uh, customers, we, we write them a handwritten note. Is that something they want, or should we be doing it in another way? So for each of these things, they're a problem, 
we're coming up with ideas to solve that problem and we're prototyping each section of our business. And this is something that's not too, not really that difficult to do and saves you a lot of time. If you would like to find out more about the business model canvas, I recommend this book. And also just in entrepreneurship in general, this is kind of the process we're following as a lean startup model. So those are good books. We'll send out links on that too. So why should you try, try out design thinking in your own lives and businesses? I'm gonna give you three reasons. The first is money. Early on in a project, you have to make a lot of decisions. And let's say we were making a pointer. Now, when it comes to deciding what material we're gonna use, we could say, oh, I think it should be plastic or maybe gold. Like, I really like gold, it looks great. And I can make a flippant decision that we're gonna go with gold. But five months down the line, that decision is going to become very expensive when we start buying tooling and raw materials. And if, if you can spend just a bit more time on your decisions, that's quite an extreme example, but if you can spend a bit more time, a bit more, be a bit more creative on your decision making, down the line it's going to save you a lot of money. Secondly, design thinking is fun. You can get your whole team involved and everyone gets to put input into a project. Sketching, brainstorming, prototyping, these are all easy things for everyone in your team to get involved, from the man sweeping the floors to the CEO sitting behind his desk. And this, because it's fun, it leads me to my third point. It's empowering. When everyone gets to have their say and be part of a project, they start to own that project. And as the leader of a team or a business, there's not so much responsibility on your shoulders to come up with all the, the decisions when everyone in the team is actually contributing and they start to own the project. It's like their baby. So let's reflect. What is design thinking? Well, it's made up of three steps. Inspiration, where you, where you see problems and needs that people have. The ideation stage, where you come up with ideas to solve those problems and then the implementation stage where you actually go about trying, trying out some of your ideas. And through my own experience of trying, applying this kind of thinking, I've seen that it can apply just not to designing products, but actually all different parts of your business. And I encourage you to try it out because you're going to save money. It's going to be a fun way to lead projects and you're going to empower your team. So as Zimbabweans, let's make plans, but let's design them first. Thank you. <laughs>